There are like a million baby monitors on the market to choose from, but recently I came across this Wi-Fi baby monitor on Amazon, which is listed for only $45, and that is the MobiCam HDX. And it got me thinking, why are monitors like the MobiCam HDX and others of its ilk classified as baby monitors, and what makes them hundreds of dollars cheaper than other Wi-Fi monitors like the Nana Pro or Miku Pro? Well, let's find out. Hey, this is John with Fathercraft, where we make online tools and gear for parents to make their lives just a little bit easier. So let's first take a look at the MobiCam HDX, again, which is only $45. From a purely physical standpoint, this monitor is very similar to about 99.9% .9 of other video baby monitors on the market in that it's small, it's white and black, and it's made of plastic. Without knowing the exact material composition of these monitors, I have to rely on feel, and the MobiCam feels like it's built sturdily enough uh, with its hard plastic outer shell. Now, of all the monitors I mentioned in this video, I'd have to say that the Miku Pro is by far the most premium feeling of the bunch, uh, with the Nanit Pro close behind. Now, when it comes to mounting the MobiCam, you've got two options. You can use the included wall mount hardware to mount it to a wall, or leave it set on its haunches on some flat surface. Now, more expensive monitors like the Miku Pro and Nanit Pro and even the Cubo AI Plus have uh, more mounting options available. You've got the wall mount option, the surface option, and a floor stand option. So with the MobiCam, you get a 1280 by 720 resolution, which is technically considered HD, but what I would consider on the lower end of the HD spectrum. Higher end baby monitors like the Miku, the Nanit, the Cubo AI Plus, um, they all have 1920 by 1080 resolution, which is true HD in my book. Now to be fair, it's not a huge difference, but the higher resolution for sure makes the night vision feeds on these monitors less grainy uh, than the lower resolution baby monitors like the MobiCam. When it comes to internal processors, monitors like the Miku Pro and Nanit Pro are in another league compared to the MobiCam, and that's because these monitors need to be able to carry out complex functions like monitoring your baby's breathing, so they need more processing power. Okay, so Wi-Fi monitors are built around apps. So let's talk about some of the app features with these monitors. Now I'll start with the MobiCam because um, it'll go quickly. So connecting the app is actually quite snappy and the connectivity once you're connected is pretty strong. I haven't lost a feed yet while testing this out. Now once you're logged in, you have a handful of features to play around with. You can toggle a full screen view. You've got two-way communication. You have the ability to take snapshots and video recordings, which can then be saved to an album. There's also a cloud storage option as well, but if you have an SD card, you can use that to store all your screenshots and video recordings. If you opt for the cloud storage, you'll need a subscription. Now, there is one feature that stands out with the MobiCam, which in my opinion is something that all Wi-Fi baby monitors should have, and that's its pan and tilt capabilities. What happens is when you've got the app open, you can swipe on the video feed with your finger to adjust the pan and tilt positioning. And the function itself is fairly responsive and quiet too, which is important um, because it seems like the younger your kids are, the better their selective hearing is. I don't know if you've ever tried to open a package of Oreos at night, but if your kid is anywhere within a square mile radius, they will hear you doing it. Unfortunate, but it's true. While it's responsive to the movement of your finger, the camera movement itself isn't very precise, meaning it seems that each swipe on the screen corresponds to a set degree of movement. So whether you just barely swipe the screen or give it a big old swipe, the camera moves the same amount. This is what you can get for only $45. Uh, and the question is, why is this monitor so much cheaper than other baby monitors like the Nanit Pro or Miku Pro? But first, before I get into that, I need to call this out. In my opinion, the MobiCam HDX baby monitor isn't really a baby monitor, even though it's marketed as a baby monitor. It's simply a video monitor. And I say that because it's missing a hugely important feature that comes with true baby monitors, and that's background audio. Now, without this ability, you lose an extremely important aspect of monitoring your baby, and that is being actually able to hear them, even if the app is closed or if your parent unit screen is off. You can, if you want, offset this limitation by purchasing an audio-only monitor, like uh, this one here, which we'll be reviewing coming up fairly soon. This is a camping uh, monitor. It's an audio-only monitor. This one's pretty expensive. It's 150 bucks, but you can find really cheap audio only monitors um, on Amazon or wherever uh, for like 40 bucks or something. The caveat to that is you've got another device to carry around just to be able to listen to your baby. Now it's my opinion that the majority of the cost of baby monitors, uh, Wi-Fi baby monitors especially, comes from the app development. So for instance, the Miku Pro app has about 10 times more features than the MobiCam. You get things like white noise, background audio, as I mentioned, temperature and humidity readings, you also get access to historical sleep trends that will help you visually see 
how your child is sleeping at night with actual data. You're also paying for better resolution and with the Miku Pro, some seriously high-end speakers. But. but the biggest difference between these monitors breathing monitoring. So the processing power of monitors like the Miku Pro and Nano Pro are vastly superior to these cheaper monitors and allows for more functionality like breathing monitoring. With the Miku Pro, breathing monitoring is performed automatically, while with the Nano Pro, you have to use their proprietary breathing wear to utilize its breathing monitoring capabilities. So you're not just paying for the way cooler app, but you're also paying for a far more robust operating system within the monitors themselves. Okay, so having said all of that, I do think these cheaper monitors are worth considering in certain situations. I definitely wouldn't recommend them for new parents with newborns because they actually do not do enough baby monitoring. But for parents who say have like an older kid and a newborn on the way or a newborn in the house um, and who don't want to shell out hundreds of extra dollars for a second fancy Wi-Fi monitor, then these cheaper monitors are definitely worth looking into and I think the way to go. Now, just a friendly reminder, head on over to fathercraft.com bag to check out our ruggedly handsome superiorly crafted bag for dads. Whether you have a newborn or you're heading out for a day trip with the family, or you're just simply traveling around the world or on a business trip, this bag really can handle it all. It is exactly what you need. Head on over to fathercraft.com slash bag and get one of these guys back here. Super sexy. We are also rapidly approaching the launch of the Fathercraft community, which I'm personally super pumped for because I'm eager to chat with dads out there about what they know, what their experiences dads are like, uh, and really just to simply have a forum to open up to other folks about things that are going on and confirm whether or not I'm going crazy. Anyway, it's gonna be super beneficial. Uh, we'll have exclusive content in the form of interviews with experts, uh, exclusive reviews, Q and A's uh, from uh, other members, among many other types of content to look forward to. So you can find out much more information about our community by going to fathercraft.com slash community. Again, that's fathercraft.com slash community. All right, folks, that's all for today. I'll see you in the next video.